Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, I'm going to be teaching you an original song that I had the pleasure of co-writing with Evan, and we are calling this song The Ascent. Now, we came up with this name uh, because the song has a couple key changes that take it higher up in pitch, but I also feel like this song, it starts off really, really soft, and then it builds in momentum, kind of like traversing a mountain, right? It's really easy at the base, but as you go higher and higher up the mountain, it becomes much more challenging. So uh, this is actually the second tune that Evan and I have co-written. And the first one, it's called Spanish Nights. If you haven't seen it, definitely give it a listen. It's one that we're really proud of. But this time around, the co-writing was really different than on Spanish Nights. See, on Spanish Nights, I wrote uh, an A melody and a B melody, and I sent it off to Evan, and he evolved it. This time around, I did the same thing, but when I sent it to Evan, I said, take it and make it your own, and he, what's the opposite of evolution? Revolution, right? He, he completely took it and made it his own. So f from my perspective, this was really cool to watch Evan come into his own as a composer. So really, really cool to see him gain a lot of confidence in his composition skills. Now, let's take a step back. Let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So needless to say, this is an arrangement that's best suited for the advanced player. But if you're at that seasoned, intermediate, budding advanced level, I think you should jump in and give it a shot. Because this is one of those songs that I think is a lot harder at face value. When you watch the performance, it looks really intimidating. But as you jump into it in the lesson with me, you're going to realize that it's a little bit easier than it looks. So definitely give it a shot if you're kind of budding into the advanced level. Now, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the lesson. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play the first half of the tune. But in the part two lesson, which is available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for The Ascent. The part two lesson, it's gonna cover the second half of the tune. Also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off and follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab here. Now this is a really neat feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. So for this lesson, if you have the tabs printed out, make sure you print the version called Andrew's version. And what I did is I simplified some of the Olympic things that Evan did. So my version is gonna sound about 95% the same uh, as what Evan's doing. So a couple little rhythm changes here, a couple changes to chords to make them easier here and there. So just minor changes uh, just to make it easier to play. So make sure you print off that version to follow along with this lesson. We'll also have tabs on screen too. But if you do want to uh, take a look at what Evan did, we will have a note for note transcription of exactly what he played as well. So. Before we jump into the lesson, a couple things that we want to touch on real quick. The first thing I want to talk about is our right hand approach for finger picking. And this is really a tune that I think is best suited for a three finger approach. So thumb gets string four and three, index gets string two, and middle gets string one. You could use a four finger approach where each finger gets its own string. And you can do a hybrid between three and four finger approach. There's really no right or wrong way. When we do have strumming, it's just gonna be basic down and up strumming. So nothing super fancy happening in that regard. And the last thing I wanna talk about is high G. So you do need a high G ukulele to follow along with this lesson. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're kicking off on theme one. So let me go ahead and put the first two bars of tab up on the screen and let me play it for you and then we'll jump into learning it. So here's what it sounds like. So that's a good gist of what our first couple bars sound like. So let's break it down. So we're starting with everyone's favorite chord, just the stock G major. So go ahead and fret that chord for me. And the second thing I want you to take a look at is the rhythm. So if look at just measure one. And if we look at measure one, we can see that we are playing all eighth notes. So keep that in mind that we're keeping each note at an even length. So we're gonna start off playing string three, 
string two. Then we can strum that chord and then do a pull off with the middle finger to the open A. So we have one and two and. After that, play string four, then give me a double stop. So that means to pluck two notes at the same time. And that's gonna be string two and three. And then back to open G. Now, I'm gonna put a box around these first seven notes. Okay, so we have one and two and three and four. Those first seven notes, I want you to memorize them, get them stuck in your head because as you see, those seven notes are gonna get repeated over and over and over and over in the upcoming measures. So I think there's one more time, over and over and over and over. You'll, you'll see as we get into it. But get those seven notes stuck to uh, your brain because we're gonna see it again and again. So after that, we're going to make a C minor. Now you can bar it if you want or you can use three fingers. I like to use middle, ring, and pinky, just for this first bar. I think it's a little bit of an easier transition, but as we go into the next measure, we're gonna be barring it. So either or, you can use three fingers or barring it. So all together we have. Okay, if we try that together, all eighth notes. So one, two, ready, go. Now, you're going to hold that C minor out into the first beat, the end of one, and beat two. So a dotted quarter. That means your first hit in measure two is going to be on the end of two. And it's going to be just the open G. Then we can pluck string one and two, and then go back and hit the open G. Now, the rhythm is key here. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. So hit on the end of two, then we have quarter notes, three, four to end it. Let's try together, let's try from the end of four. So we're gonna hit that C minor, hold it in for the first beat and a half and then finish up that measure. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Nice, so if we try one and two together, we have one, two, ready, go. Beautiful. So going into measure three and four, here's where we see those same seven notes, right? So I'll put a little box around it, but you can see the exact same start is uh, literally just a copy and paste, right? So you know how to play the first seven notes of part three. So let's start learning uh, what's happening that's new, starting from the end of four. So here's where we have a variation on our C minor. So go ahead and bar flat on the third fret from three down, and I want you to add your ring finger to five on string one. And we can go ahead and just strum that. It gives us a C minor add nine. So that D note is the nine. So when we strum this chord, this time around, we're still holding into uh, the next measure, but you're only holding into beat one. So your first hit's gonna be on the end of one. So we have three and four, whoop, try it again. Three and four and one and two and three, four. So let me try that without counting over it. Three and four. Nice, so that's what it sounds like. So we're gonna strum that chord, hold into beat one, then we're gonna lift the ring finger up and play string one, which is barred, open G, then string two, which is barred, and then open G again. Rhythm, rhythm wise, and two and three and four. Okay, so and two and hold into beat three, then beat four. Let's try that starting from the C minor add nine hit. So end of four, three and four, and one and two and three, four. One more time, maybe a little bit slower. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Beautiful. If we try three into four together, we get this three, four.
Nice. Going into measure five and six, the first seven notes, identical again. So let's go ahead and start from the new chord shape, which is a crazy stretch. So here's what I want you guys to do. Take the index finger, pl place it on the third fret of string three, take your ring finger, put it on six on string two, and then your pinky goes on eight on string one. And give me a strum. This time around, take a look at the rhythm. The rhythm is actually identical to what we did in measure two. So you're hitting on the end of two, beat three, beat four. So rhythmically, we should be pretty familiar with what's happening here. So I have three and four and one and two and three, four. Now the hard part is transitioning into this shape. So that's tricky to do. What am I doing to make it easier? I'm going to start with just moving the index up, then placing the other two after it. Kind of like that. See if I can clean it. Okay. One and two and three and four and one. Okay. Try with me. Let's go slow. Three. Four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So this is one where you're just going to have to really uh, hit pause on the video and just loop and practice and get the muscle memory down. You, you could also do like basic G going into this crazy shape. That's kind of a good way to practice. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, just to help build muscle memory in that transition. But start with just the index and then place the other two down. Don't try to do everything at once. Don't try to get all three fingers like that, right? The index starts and then these two follow. That's kind of the trick that I found that made it easier for transitioning. Let's see if we can try those two together though. So here we go, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Now as we go into measure seven and eight, we can see we have the same start, so same first seven notes. Uh, this time around, we're back to C minor add nine. So barring with the ring finger on five on string one. And we're actually going to be uh, continuing the next couple notes the same as we did in measure four. So three and four and one and two. Okay, so you're familiar with that, but to end it, we have another crazy jazz chord. So to do this chord, let's start from the bottom. Place the pinky on eight on string one. Middle finger will go six, so we're gonna do a partial bar, so it's gonna be flat on three and two. And then take your index, put it on five on string four. So it's tricky with this middle finger because we have to be bent at that uh, joint right there. So we want to not be sticking up kind of like this curve right here, but bent inwards. Now, if this is too hard, you can always just cut string four out and just do like a bar six, six, and eight. That'll make it easy. You still get the melody note and most of the chord sound out of it. So feel free to simplify it. If this shape is a little bit tricky, I think it's ridiculously hard, but it is a jazz chord and that's what they're known for being challenging. Now I'm gonna put a couple X's uh, next to two of these open G hits. For me, when I'm playing this uh, two bars, I actually find it easier to substitute these open G's for slaps, like little percussive hits. Uh, for some reason, it just feels easier to play to me. Um, Evan doesn't do that, he plays the open G. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Try both ways. You can play the open G or you can add a little percussive chunk and pick the one that sounds, or pick the one that's easiest for you to play. So here's what it sounds like, uh, these two bars, if I add a little percussive chunk.
for me, I just feel like that's a lot easier to play. So either way works. They both sound pretty much the same. So there's no right or wrong. And this is actually a really good example of how you can take this music and make it your own. Remember, the version I'm telling you uh, switches things uh, subtly around. So it's not note for note exactly like Evan plays, but it has this same feel, the same vibes. It's like 90 to 95% the same as what he plays. So feel free to adapt it more to fit your playing style. So let's see if we can try these two bars together, and I'm gonna go ahead and play it with the little chunks in there. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Nice. Now, let's cover one quick thing. The transition. So going from the minor to this jazz chord. Watch my index finger. It's just gonna move up to that bar. Uh, it's, it's technically not doing a bar, but it looks like a bar shape. I'm really just fretting the fourth string. Then I'm doing the partial bar and pinky on eight. So check out the transition. So that's kind of the easiest way is to lead with the index finger. That's kind of what the point that I want to make here. Lead with the index finger. Don't try to build it like that. You want to build with the index finger and then add those two down. So again, that's probably a, a section where you need to hit pause on this video and just practice that transition. You can use the same approach. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Something like that. Just simplify it to work on muscle memory. Okay, going into measure nine and ten. First thing uh, we can see again, se same seven notes to start us off. So let's start from the A7. So just the basic A7. The only difference here is that we just want to strum from four to two. You can also pluck the chord if you want, doesn't matter. We're holding into beat one. So our first note's gonna be on the end of one. So we're gonna go three, two, four, and then open A. And if you want to do what Evan does, he's just going to do an artificial harmonic using the plucked method to get a really nice, pretty harmonic for that uh, open A string. Um, it's optional though. You can do it like that, or you can do like Evan does. Now, if you are new to uh, doing harmonics, we actually have a complete course uh, that teaches you three ways to create harmonics. You can check it out by clicking this link. I'll put it in the description box below. But the uh, lessons that teach you the mechanics behind performing the three ways to do harmonics, they are free. So definitely check out that course. It'll teach you how to do those. And we will see more harmonics in just a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can do nine and 10 together. So this one I think is pretty easy. I'm gonna skip the harmonic for now. I'm just gonna take the easy way out and play the open A for the last hit. So here's what we get, nine and 10. One, two, three, four. So pretty simple on that one. That open A, it's gonna last a half note. So going on to measure 11 and 12, here's where things are a little bit different. So we don't have the same first seven notes. Instead, we have a new piece of music, which is actually really cool and actually pretty simple to play. Sounds like this. Okay, that's a good gist of what it sounds like. So we're starting off with just opens. So plucking three and two, we have a double stop. Open G, take the middle, put it on the second fret of string one. Pluck that with the open E, pull off to the open A, open G. Then we can take that middle, put it on the third fret of string two, double stop with the open C, open G, and then give me a strum while keeping that middle held down. So a lot of opens, right? And a lot of one finger uh, chord movement. Key thing here, all eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Okay, try it with me. Three, four.
Now at this point, we're going to hold into beat one, then we're gonna take our index finger, put it down on the second fret of string one. So give me a double stop, so first and second string, then open G. Then we're gonna take this shape, we're gonna move it up to five and three. So give me a double stop, then open G. Then we're gonna take this shape and we're gonna keep it intact and move it up to seven and five. This is where it's a little bit tricky. So you're going to pluck and you're going to slide into eight and sev. And eight and sev was the same shape as the first one that we did, three and two. So you really have two shapes. You've got first shape, second shape, second shape, first shape. So that's kind of a way to cheat and memorize what's happening here. Okay, so going back to seven and five, we're gonna pluck and just slide up to eight and sev. Sev five becomes eight sev. Okay, so just take a second and get comfortable with that, it's a little tricky. But after that, open G. So this open G, it's just, it's, it's gonna be um, what allows you to do movement and have sustain through these double stops. So, right, this open G is just gonna be like in between pretty much all the uh, double stop hits. But let's backtrack, I'm gonna play it from the strum of C6 so that we can hear uh, the rhythm. Remember, this holds into beat one, three and four and one and two and three and four and. and you can hear how playful that open G is. Again, three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, let's see if we can try that together. Three and four and one and two and three and four and. Nice. Putting it together, 11 and 12. One, two, three, four. Nice. Really fun uh, two bars. I really love those two bars. Now, to resolve those two bars, Evan does this. Very, very cool. So a bit of a stretch chord, which by the way, if you're new to playing stretch chord, stretch licks, stretch phrases, anything that involves the index and the pinky going <laughs> quite the distance. I have a lesson that teaches you three exercises uh, for increasing reach with your left hand. So I'm gonna link that in the description box below. Run those exercises as your warm up routine every day and over a few, after a few months, you'll start to uh, notice that your reach has been increasing. So if these stretch chords are a little bit trickier, uh, jump into those exercises. Another thing that makes it easier is the size of the uke. Uh, I'm playing with a concert, Evan's playing with the tenor, but Evan's like an Olympic athlete. <laughs> so, you know, he can do things that I can't do. So if I have a concert size, stretch chords are easier than doing them on a tenor. So I'll, I'll say that it's okay to cheat a little bit. Um, but anyways, back on track. So our first chord, crazy shape, uh, or crazy stretch, take the index, put it on five, pinky goes on nine, open strings above, and we're gonna strum down for the first hit. Hit the open G, and then move the index and pinky to two and five. And you can strum down, or you can give me just the double stop of one and two. So, kind of like that. One, two, and. Okay, hold into beat three, hit the open G, and another double stop. So, one, two, and three, and four. So, not too bad. Let's try together. Ready, go. Now, this is last double stop, it's gonna get held for the first two beats of the next bar, come down with a slap, and then you have a walk up, open, C, to the D note. So together. Sounds like that. Let's try it. One, two, ready, go. So that's actually going to complete everything for theme one. There was a lot that we covered. We are uh, 14 bars in, but quite a bit of music, although a lot of repetition. So it didn't make it a little bit easier to learn because the same 
seven notes that started out the two bar phrase got repeated over and over and over and over again. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a listen to Evan playing the first 14 bars, so theme one to a T. Remember that um, what I taught you was a little bit different, so it'd be kind of cool to hear the subtle variations that Evan puts into the, his playing, and also it'd be cool to hear it at uh, full tempo speed. So let's take a listen to him playing theme one, then we'll come back and learn theme two. Okay, so with theme two, it's going to get a little bit more challenging to play, but a lot of really cool stuff uh, coming up, plus a little bit of repetition. So it does make it a little bit easier when we have repetition. So let's do this. Let's um, put up the first two bars, so 15 and 16, and I'm going to go ahead and just play through this so we can hear what we're about to learn. Uh, keep in mind, uh, we've got a couple chunks, so take a look at those. They're on beat three for both bars, but here's what it sounds like. Okay, first thing you can do is just get it stuck in your head. Just get that melody stuck in your head. It's going to make it so much easier to play. If you can sing it, you can play it. So. To start us off, we're playing out of that C minor. So same shape as we did before. Uh, eventually we'll turn it into the add nine, so that D note. But for right now, just go ahead and bar flat with the index. And we're gonna play string three, then open G, then turn it into the add nine. Give me a strum, lift the ring up, first string. So eighth notes to start us off. One and two and come down with a slap, and then take your ring, put it on six on string two, give me a double stop of three and two. So notice index has been barred and anchored the entire time. Then hit the open G. Then remember that crazy stretch chord we did? Three, six, eight. It shows up again. <laughs> so give me a strum of that shape. So backtrack all eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Now after this, you're going to hold into beat one, then move your pinky down to six on string one. So play that note, then the open G. Now, I'm gonna put a little box around these first uh, eight notes in measure one plus two notes in measure two. This is going to get repeated uh, again, these, these exact 10 notes. So get them stuck in your mind because we're going to see them again, not in measure 17 and 18, but in measure 19 and 20. So get that stuck in your head for right now. One and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, so get that stuck in your head. We'll see it again. So getting rid of the box, let's keep going. At this point, we're going to do the double stop again. So three and two. And we can lift the pinky up because we're gonna come down with the slap and then pluck a double stop of one and two. So six and three. So notice I'm still barred, right? I have to be barred to grab this double stop and then end with the open G. So what's hard I think is the movement of the pinky with that stretch chord, right? That's just tricky, right? And then eventually we have to lift up to grab the last double stop. So watch the pinky and the index finger. A lot of movement happening. This is one of those uh, measures where you definitely wanna hit pause and work on it slowly to get it down. It is a very tricky one and I think it's one that took me quite a bit of practice to get comfortable with. So don't be afraid of just hitting pause and, and taking the time to work on it. Uh, let's see if we can try it together though. So we'll go nice and slow throughout these two bars. So one, two, three, four. Nice. 
I realize that's probably not super slow, so you can always use the cog in the YouTube player to slow it down. Uh, if you are a premium member, it's always best to use the on-screen tab viewer because you can literally set the speed incrementally and you can loop bars to, uh, to or you can highlight bars to loop them and slow it down uh, and just literally do something like that just over and over again to get it down. So that's always the best way to work on these. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next couple bars and here's what they sound like. Okay, so let's break that one down. So a little bit different uh, in our playing because we have some really cool and beautiful sounding movement that goes down the neck. So here's what's happening. We're gonna start off with just the basic G, and we're going to start with the open string of the A, hammering on to the second fret. After that, hit the open G, and then give me a double stop, three and two. So one and two and. Come down with the slap, and we're gonna move up to seven and 10. So string two and one. Open G, move down to five and nine, double stop, and that'll finish up this measure. But if I play just this measure by itself, it sounds very abrupt. These, these two bars, they're a musical phrase. You wanna practice these two bars together, not one at a time. But take a look at this uh, movement walking down. I'm using first and pinky. So just like we did previously, first and pinky. We saw that earlier in this tune. So same approach. So let's see if we can try that measure together. So we have three, four. Nice. Going into the next measure, we're gonna start with the open G and then move this shape down to two and five. So give me a double stop, then open G. And at this point, move your index up to the second fret of string three. And we're gonna play that note and then add your middle finger to three on string two, and you have a G5. So give me a strum, hit string one, and then we have that same open second walk up, which takes us to this note as the start of the next measure. So a little bit of movement happening in this measure, right? If we take a look at where we left off, it was five and nine. So we have open G down to two five, double stop, open G, move the index up to the second fret of string three, play that note, put the middle finger down, makes it a G5, strum, first string, lift up, open, second. Okay, so a little bit of movement, again, wanna hit pause and just work on this bar. But if you have it down, let's see if we can try 17 and 18 together because that really does sound like a complete musical phrase. So here we go. One, two, three, four. So going on to our next couple bars. So that's what our next couple bars sound like. And if I put that little box around the first 10 notes, what do we see? That repeat that I had mentioned earlier. So you know how to play all of measure 19 plus the first couple hits of measure 20. So let's take it from the new chord on the end of beat two. And this chord shape, forget about the name of it, it's just the same shape as the G chord. But if you move it all the way up the neck to 10, 11, 10 plus the open G, we get where we want to be. So we're gonna hit this chord, we can do a strum, hold it into beat three, add the pinky to 12 on string one, and then open G to end it. So we have starting on the end of two, one and two and three and four, okay? So the hard thing here is going to be the transition again. So we have that crazy stretch, three, six, eight chord with the crazy pinky movement, and then a crazy jump up the neck. 
So that's really what you want to practice. And you can go slow. You can kind of ignore rhythm as you're working on muscle memory. Right? Don't worry too much about trying to keep it steady in time and playing all the right rhythms. Just work on the muscle memory. Right? And once you get comfortable with that, you can start to add the timing of the music. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can play these two bars in time together. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Nice. Now going on to our next measure. It's going to sound like this, and I'm just going to play one measure at a time this time. Okay, so we have a G chord all the way up the neck. So middle finger is 11 on string 3, index is uh, 10 on string 2, and pinky is 14 on string 1. G string is open. So we're going to go strum 4, double stop, strum 1, 4. 1, 2, and 3, and 4. So very simple bar compared to some of the stuff we've done thus far. Let's try together. Ready, go. Nice. Now our next measure is going to sound like this. So really cool movement happening here. So we're starting with the G minor. We can strum down. From here we're just going to take this shape and we're going to move it up to 5-5-3. Five, five, so you can see these fingers, they just slide up the neck. 5-5-3. Five, five, now the trick that I'm doing is I'm going down, up, come down with a slap, and I'm going to lead with my ring finger to 6, and then make the G chord shape, so the basic G chord shape, on 5, 6, 5, and I'm going to pluck. So I have down, up, slap, pluck. Okay? To finish it up, up, down. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Okay? 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Let's try that together. Ready, go. Pretty cool, right? A little tricky, so again, maybe just transition between those three chord shapes to build muscle memory. A little tricky, but not too, too, too bad. Now those two bars, I think you can practice separately. You know, they, they don't sound like a complete musical phrase together, kind of like other bars that we've done in this theme too. So you can feel free to practice separately. Once you get comfortable with that, go ahead and practice the other one. If we try them together, it sounds like this. Try with me. One, two, ready, go. Nice. Now, going into our next couple bars, I'm going to put a little box around the first seven notes. What do you notice? They're exactly the same as what we did for the first bar in theme two and the fourth bar. So that was uh, measure 15 and measure 19. So you know that entire phrase, one and two and three and four. So here's the thing. At this point, you're going to go up to that same G chord shape on 10, 11, 10 that we did earlier. We're going to strum that, hold into beat one of the next measure. Then take your pinky, put it on 12 on string one. Give me a double step. Then come down with a slap. Move the pinky up a half step. Double step. Then open G. Then give me 13 to 15 on string one, so you gotta lift these other fingers up, and then open G. Now this is tricky, so we have three and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So tricky, tricky stuff happening here. This is one that I think you'll have to hit pause and practice on. And this is actually a rhythm that I changed a little bit from what Evan did, because uh, the, way, the way Evan was playing it just felt really, really tricky uh, to me. So this one I, I changed a little bit. So let's break it down, starting on the end of four. Three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, 
So strum, hold, pinky, slap, pinky, four, slide, four, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So, whew, tricky, tricky. So hit pause, just work on that ending. Remember the first seven notes, you know how to play. Putting it together. Sounds like that. Let's try together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> if you can get through that, the next couple bars are really easy. Let's take a look at them. So we're starting with a D5. So we have nine, 10, 12. So we're gonna do a down strum, come down with a slap, and turn it into minor. So same G minor shape, but up the neck, nine, 10, and eight. So I've got strum, slap, pluck. Now at this point, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna move down and I'm gonna do two muted plucks. So string two, string three, you could pluck string one, string three, it doesn't really matter. Just want two muted uh, plucks of the strings to give a little bit of a cool percussive sound. So it sounds like this. Okay, so one, two, and three, and four. At this point, bar five from three down, and we're going to pluck it. Or if you want, you can strum it, doesn't matter. And then we're gonna play out of it. And playing out of it starts on the end of one, so we're gonna go first, four, three, strum, strum, four, three. Okay, try that with me, starting on the end of one. Three and four and one. Nice. Putting that bar together, two bars together. Three, four. Sounds like that. I really love this bar, especially when you play it. A little bit more up to speed. It just sounds really, really cool. I love the creativity that Evan's throwing into this piece because you have a lot of repetition that uh, reinforces melodic themes and then he throws in a cool variation of sound uh, for a couple bars here and there and it really, really keeps the listener on edge and makes it interesting. So he finds a perfect balance between catchy yet throwing uh, variations to keep you on your toes, so to speak. Okay, so moving on to our next couple bars. It's gonna sound like this. We have a lot of cool uh, movement happening here. Okay, so let's break that down. So we're gonna start with that C minor. We're just gonna do a double stop. So three and two, open G, then take your uh, ring finger, put it down on five, so C minor at nine, and give me a double stop, but this time, hammer on. Okay, so you have one, two, end. Come down with the slap, and then give me two more of those muted plucks. So I'm gonna pluck two and three. And then this index finger is gonna do a double stop on five. So literally just moving up a whole step. So check out what's happening. Let's try together. One, two, ready, go. Now, at this point, we're just going to be playing out of this uh, bar that we've got. So we're barring the fifth fret, right? So we're going to go two, four, three, and then we're going to place our ring and middle finger down on seven and six and pull off to double five. So double pull off. Then take the pink, sorry, ring finger, go to eight, eight to seven, so slide, and then back to five. So this entire time, my index is barred. Okay, sounds like that. Playing it in time, I think we should start on the end of four, three and four, and one and two and three and four, and that's a little bit easier to hear the context of the music. Let's see if we can try that. Two and three and four, and one and two and three and four, and putting it together. One, two, three, four.
pretty cool, right? I just love uh, these creative bars that he's throwing into the mix. So moving on, we have our next couple bars, and this is uh, actually going to end theme number two. Sounds like this. Okay, let's break down what's happening. So we're, we left off on five. We're going to go back track down to three. Give me a double stop. Open G, then we've got that crazy three, six, eight stretch. So we can pluck or strum, come down with the slap. And then we saw this shape before. I think most of us know this chord as an F. It's the same as the E shape, right? Without the fourth string, move it up a half step. Uh, it's an F. In the context of this tune, a little bit of a different name, but most of us are probably familiar with this shape. Okay, so we have one, two, and three, four. Let's go now. One more time, go. Now I put a little staccato dot for this last hit, but you can hold it out. That's actually what Evan does. So you can hold it out and let it sustain. Then the last uh, measure, we're just going to do a one finger chord. So first fret of string two, we have open C, E string, G string, a string. And again, if you want to do what Evan does, he just adds the harmonics to it. But that's going to be it. So we have one, two, and three, four, and then ending it. And this one too, you can be a little loose on timing, right? It doesn't have to be perfectly in time uh, for ending this. I just try to keep uh, the feel of the piece uh, intact, right? You don't want to be super loose on timing. But that's going to be it for um, theme number two. So let's do this, guys. Let's take a listen to Evan playing through all of theme two. There's a little bit of variation that he throws here and there, so it'd be kind of cool to hear what we did versus what he does. Let's take a listen. Okay, so going into theme three, what Evan does is really cool. He takes uh, our chord progression, which was a lot of G to C minor. He takes it and he alters the G to minor. So you have G minor to C minor now. So it gives it a, a different sound. And I think it's really cool. Let me play these first two bars. All right, so let's break that down. Uh, before we start learning, let's actually do this. I'm going to put a box around the first 9, 10, 11, 12 notes. First 12 notes. So uh, the first bar and half of the second bar. Get that stuck in your head because as we saw before, these notes, they're going to get repeated again coming up shortly. All right, so keep that in mind. So let's start us off. We have the G minor. Three, two, strum, pull off. Come down with a slap, double stop, open G. This time around, go to the C minor with three fingers. And give me a strum. So one and two and three and four and. Okay, going into the next bar, we're not holding out uh, into the first beat. We are actually playing on the first beat this time. So hit the open G, double stop, open G, string three. That's the phrase that you got to memorize, those first 12 notes, okay? So continuing on from there, strum, open G. Then I want you to lift the middle and the pinky up and move the ring back to the first fret of string two. Double stop with the open C, move it up a half step, put the middle finger down on the first fret of string three, double stop. Now you're using these fingers because when we go into the next measure, we're taking us back to uh, G minor. So that's kind of why we're using crazy little fingers to end. Okay, that's a lot. So let's backtrack again. G minor, three, two, strum, pull off, slap, double stop, open G, C minor, using three fingers. 
Continue on with playing G, double, G, third string, strum, G, lift those two up, drop down, double stops. Okay, so hit pause. It's not super hard what you're playing here. There's just a lot to intake. Okay, so hit pause, uh, work on that. Use those fingers for the end, right? That fingering for the end, because it's gonna set you up for success for the next two bars. But if you feel comfortable with it, let's give it a shot. The trick and the key to remember is that it's all eighth notes. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Now, going into the next two bars, we left off with one and two, just move it up a half step, bada bing, bada boom, you're back in to the G minor shape. So give me a double stop, open G, then take that index, put it down to make the full G minor chord, double stop, pull off to the open A. Come down with the slap, give me a double stop again, then open G, and then here's where we have a different chord. So we're going to the C minor add nine. This time around, we do have to do the bar, okay? So you can see that the start of this measure, 33, it's basically the same thing we did for 31 with variation. So it's kind of fun to switch it up a little bit instead of copy and paste every time. So, sounds like that. One and two and three and four and, let's try that together. Ready, go. One and two and three and four and. Nice. Now you're holding this minor add nine into beat one, then lift the ring finger up, play the first string, come down with the slap, go to that crazy jazz chord that we did before. We're gonna pluck that on the end of two, hold into beat three, then lift the pinky up, bar down with the middle finger. So it's gonna be flat on all of six, okay? Play string one. Come down with the slap, get rid of it. Use your index to play five on string one. This is tough, okay? I'm not gonna lie, this uh, movement here is tricky. Let me play these two bars together. Sounds so cool, but tricky movement, to say the least. So let's see if we can try that slow. So one and two and three and four and one and two and four and so feel free to hit pause and loop that a couple times with me in this video uh, you can even um, uh, just pause the video totally and just work on it it's a tough transition but it's really really cool really really cool stuff now, going on to our next couple bars, this is where we see our first big repeat, right? So I'm gonna put the box around the first 12 notes because they are identical to what you played for 31 and 32. Okay, but again, oof, I shouldn't use that bar. I should play it like that. So look at the last two hits. You're gonna strum down from three for that C minor, and then you're going to an augmented. And I would strum up for that. So the change going from minor to the augmented, we're just gonna get rid of the pinky. We're gonna drop those two, two fingers down a half step, add the index to one on one, and just strum up. So, now when you listen to Evan do this uh, in the play along, which we're, we'll get to soon, um, he adds a lot of ba -da, a lot of emphasis in this part right here. So you kind of want to have a lot of like strength to end this. So um, really, really cool. He just really accents da da, right? Just just gives it a, a, a wake you up kind of thing, right? He's just grooving, right? And then he goes crazy, which I didn't do. Let me try again. So that's a better example of uh, adding a little bit more oomph at the end of it. Let's see if we can try it together. One, two, three, four.
Now going on to our next measure, we know the first seven notes. So that is identical to what we've done before. The last hit for this bar is going to be the C minor add nine. So go ahead and make that chord, give me a strum, hold it in to beat one, lift the ring up, play the first string, open G, and then take the ring, put it on five on string three, and give me a double stop, keeping that bar intact. So slight little variation at the end. Let's take it from the end of four. Three and four and one and two and three. Okay? So on beat three, I came down with a slap. And to take a look at the ending, we have those same muted plucks. So three and four and one and two and three and four. Pretty simple. Let's try that entire two bars. One, two, three, four. Now going on to our next couple bars, take a look at the first 12 notes. So all of measure 39 and half of measure 40. We know how to play that. Again, a repeat. Look at the last half of measure 40. We're just gonna go down, up, open G. So let's see if we can try this two bars together. Now this is another point where you kind of want to have a little bit more oomph in your playing because it's kind of getting to the climax. The next two bars are the climax. Right, so you just want to have a little bit more energy in the music at this point. Okay, so looking at 41 and 42, the first chord, instead of the C minor, we're just going to lift the uh, middle finger up and strum a C5, so it gives us a, a different tonality and a stronger oomph resolution point. So strum from uh, four down for the C5. Then the trick with this chord right here is that we just want it to be one, right? We want it to happen on one, not one end. So just beat one, one. So you can mute the chord just by touching the strings. Then we've got a couple single note melodies, third, first, on the A string, come down with the slap, open. So you have one, two, and three, and then go to a D. So we're gonna bar flat on two from three down, add your pinky to five on string one, and give me a strum, or you can uh, pluck it if you prefer. So one, two, and three, and four, and, all right. So let's see if we can do that. Um, there's a slap before the D, I think I forgot to mention that, but not too hard. Let's give it a shot. So three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and... Okay, let's go a little bit slower. Three, four, one, two, and slap, and slap, pluck. Nice. So not too, too bad, right? Hold this into beat one, then play string one, come down with the slap, Move the shape up a half step, pluck it, hold it into the next beat, hit string one, and then give me a down strum. Okay, this one makes a lot more sense if we play from 41 into 42. So I have. Okay, let's see if we can try that together. One, two, ready, go. So that's everything for theme three. So Evan does a little bit of a difference here and there. So it'd be really cool to hear what he's doing, especially for these ending bars. Um, but for the most part, similar vibes, right? Uh, the one thing I would listen to though is some of the reflections that he's putting into the music. So remember how I said, when he goes to that augmented, Right, he's just going, bata. He's, he's really putting accents on it and kind of making it stand out, you know, be a energized point in the music. Uh, same thing when he gets to the ending. Right, so a little bit stronger in the playing after the ending because you can already hear that we are getting ready to do a key change 
for theme four. So he's setting up a key change, so he wants to have more energy. And theme four has a lot of energy in it. But I digress. Let's listen to theme three in its entirety. Okay, so theme four. This is going to be the last theme that we cover in this part one lesson, and it's a really fun one. There's a lot of energy in this theme four. So we are changing keys now. So where we had left off, we were playing out in the G minor. We're just going to be moving up a half step. So take that G minor chord, just move it up a half step. So three, four, and two. We're going to ignore string four, and we're just going to strum from three down. So that's going to be our first hit. So we're literally just moving up a half step right now. So with that in mind, look at the uh, first chord hit. You can see that it was the same as the previous bar, right? Where we had, right? So you had one, two, and, right? So you had that first chord hit that was kind of abrupt, kind of uh, staccato-y. Da, 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 da. We're doing the same thing here. So that same feel, right? So you can hear, bah. right? So you don't want to go any kind of like sustain for that first hit, right? So you just want it to be abrupt and have some in it. So give me a strum, cut it short, second, first, and then we're gonna slap and then lay your index finger flat on four from three down. Play string two, slap, pluck, three, two, and one. So one, two, and slap, and four, and. Okay, so again. Nice and slow with me. Three, four. Beautiful. Look at the next measure. It's a slap on beat one, two, three, and four. So you're playing uh, single notes in between that for the first three. So you got slap, four, slap, two, slap, one. Come down with a slap again, and we're going into a chord shape. So we've got middle finger on five on string three, index four on string two, ring is six on string one. Okay? So you can uh, strum or pluck that hit. doesn't matter, it's up to you. So that bar together, sounds like that. I think it's best to work on two bars at a time, so let's give that a shot. Starting on 43. One, two, ready, go. Sounds really cool so far. Hold this hit into beat one from the next bar. Lift the ring finger up. Play string one, which is barred, because you're barring uh, the bottom two strings. Then take that ring, put it on six on string four, and then play a double stop of three and two. Now, this shape, six, five, flat on four for the bottom two strings, this is a shape we probably all know from playing C here. So if you move it down a half step, five, four, flat on three, that's probably a shape we've played a lot. We're just a half step up, six, five, flat on four. So you are transitioning from the ring down here to this shape that we probably have seen quite a few times. So that's an easy way to memorize what's happening here. So if I start on the end of four from the previous bar, three and four and one and two and come down with the slap, then take your pinky, put it on six on string two, give me a double stop, come down with the slap, and switch to an E without the fourth string. And give me a pluck. So a lot happening, right? So it's good to think of that chord shape that you're going into. That's the trick for memorizing. Starting on the end of four, three and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Try it with me. Three and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And try not to hit that open. G. Mine rang out a little bit on top of that E chord, and you can hear it sounds awful. 
<laughs> awful, awful, awful. Very clashing. Ugh. So avoid the G at all costs. <laughs> now, you're going to hold the E chord into beat one of the next measure. Hit string one. Then we can do a down strum, followed by two muted down strums, and then switch to a G chord shape, but a half step down. And we're going to go down, up, down. Okay, let me play what's happening starting on the end of four, so the first hit of the E. Three and four and one and two and a three and four. Without calling it out, three and four. Sounds like that. So 16th note, muted strums to give it a little pop. So let's try that together, starting on the end of four, the E hit. Three and four and one and two and a three and four. Nice. Backtracking, try those two bars again, starting on the end of four from measure 44. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and a three and four. Whew. That's a lot. Now, when you're practicing this theme four, I would actually work on four bars at a time. Four bars at a time sounds like a musical phrase. Here's what the first four sound like. So there's up to tempo, maybe a little bit slower. slower so we can hear everything that's happening but you can hear four bars at a time completes the musical phrase so for this theme four you want to work on four bars at a time going into our next two 47 48 let me just play 47 sounds like this so variation in the melody right it starts the same We've got some cool little slide and melody that goes up instead of down. So start with that G minor moved up a half step. We're going to strum that chord from three down. Remember, abrupt chord. Bah. On beat two, we're going to go four to six, drop back down to four, come down with a slap to two, come down with a slap, bar, fourth fret from three down. So one, two, and three, and four, and... It's a lot. Let's slow down. Three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and. Nice. Next measure. Take a look at the slaps. You have beat one, two, three, and four. So the same thing we saw previously, but the melody is different. So you're going to do a slap, take the ring, go six to seven, slap back to six, slap down to four, slap down to a different chord. Three, four, six. So again, slap, slide, slap, six, slap, four, slap, three, four, six. And actually this one, I would pluck that last hit. So putting it in a little bit more of a time, and actually let's backtrack. Let me play 47 into 48, because it's 48 by itself just sounds kind of really abrupt. So 47 into 48 sounds like this. We can hear music that way, doing two at a time. Let's try two at a time. One, two, three, four. Hold this chord into beat one, and then we've got just basic down and up strumming after this. So we're gonna go up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Rhythm, and two, and a three, Okay, so start on the end of four, three and four and one and two and a three and four. Try that with me. Ready? Uh, let's count it out. Three and four and one and two and a three and four. Okay, that's better. One more time. Three and four and one and two and a three and four. Nice. To finish up, the last bar is actually pretty easy. Get rid of the middle finger. We have a bar from three down and pinky stays on six give me a strum slap remember that higher g 10 11 10 we're back to that strum slap and it's that simple so one two three four 
So starting on the end of four, three and four. And again, it's kind of abrupt when we just do these two bars at a time. So 47 to 4 to oops, 50. Got to get my glasses. Sounds like this. Right, so nice and slow. Sounds much more like music. Okay, so let's listen to Evan play all of theme four. All right guys, so, so we have learned the first half of the tune now. So that's gonna complete everything for our part one lesson. We have learned a lot of music so far and we have challenged ourselves to play at higher levels with this piece. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but when you put in the work and you start to play it, uh, it's just so rewarding. This really is a piece that challenges, challenges us to grow as an ukulele player and a musician. So guys, if you want to learn the second half of the tune, I'm going to be teaching that in the part two lesson, which is available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for The Ascent. Don't forget on that page where the tabs you can print off, we have a tab uh, that uh, covers everything I've taught you. So we have Andrew's version, and then we have a secondary tab that is a note-for-note -note transcription of what Evan played in the performance. So if you want to take ideas from my version and ideas from his and mix match and create your own version, you can do just that. And also, last but not least on that page is the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning the first half of this tune with me, and I will catch you in the part two lesson to learn the second half. Take care.